These days, human beings generate huge amounts of data. Our appetite for entertainment and social media has a lot to do with this, as do the ways in which computers are used to do business and to keep society running. Image data, video files, audio files and text are just a few examples of the type of data we generate. More often than not, data need to be stored or sent from one place to another. And data storage and data transmission costs money. By compressing data into a more compact form, we can reduce the cost of storage. We can also speed up data transmission. A data compression program converts data from a ready-to-use format into a format optimised for compactness. A decompression program returns the compressed data back into its original form, so it can be used again. There are two main categories of data compression – lossless and lossy. Suppose, for example, you're compressing an image or a video file. Lossless compression means that the compressed file contains all of the information needed to recreate the original file without any loss of quality. When the file is decompressed, the image or video will look as good as the original. Lossy compression, on the other hand, means that when the compressed file is decompressed, it will not contain the same amount of data as the original. Some of it is lost, and the image or video may not look quite as good as the original. JPEG is a widely used lossy compression format for images. You can use a graphics application like Fireworks or Photoshop to save an image as a JPEG and you can control the amount of compression. Usually it's possible to strike a good balance between a reduction in file size and the permanent loss of quality it will cause. GIF is a widely used lossless compression format for images. JPEG is the best choice for digitised photographs, while GIF is more often used with simple drawn images, such as logos that have large areas of a single colour. When it comes to textual data, such as a document or a computer programme, lossless compression is essential, otherwise the decompressed document will be unreadable. Now let's talk about how compression works. There are lots of different techniques in use. In fact, some of the most well-known compressed formats, such as JPEG, employ a combination of techniques. One of these techniques is known as run-length encoding. Consider this block of data. Perhaps it was generated by some sort of poll or survey, or perhaps it's the output of some kind of data logging application. Whatever the case, this is a good candidate for compression by run-length encoding. The essence of run-length encoding is to scan the data you want to compress and for each item record the run-length, that is, the number of times it occurs, followed by the item itself. In this example there are 5 A's, 12 B's, 4 C's and so on. Notice that the compressed data set is about a quarter of the size of the original. Run-length encoding is a lossless form of compression because the compressed data set contains everything necessary to recreate the original data. Now consider this uncompressed data set. There's a lot more variation in the data this time. When the same process is applied, the compressed form of the data is larger than the uncompressed form. Compression has actually made the situation worse. This is called negative compression. Of course, both of these examples are something of a simplification. Consider this simple indexed bitmap image, which has a palette of only 16 colours. Because there are only 16 possible colours, the colour of each pixel can be encoded with only 4 bits. The denary values are shown here for convenience. The image has a width of 15 pixels and a height of 11 pixels. That's 165 pixels altogether. If the colour of each pixel is encoded separately, with 4 bits per pixel, the image takes up a total of 660 bits. When run-length encoding is applied, the image is scanned from left to right, row by row. Each row is treated separately. Whenever there's a change in a pixel value, 
a run count and the corresponding value is generated. Notice how the first row consists of 15 pixels, each with a value of 5. The second row starts with 7 5s, followed by 4 11s, followed by 4 more 5s, and so on. This time there are 134 data items that need to be stored, instead of 165. Each of these values can also be encoded with 4 bits, so this time we only need to store 536 bits of data. This is not a huge difference, but consider this simpler version of the same image, using the same palette. There are much longer runs of the same colour this time. When run length encoding is applied in the same way, there are only 86 items that need to be saved. Assuming each pixel is encoded with 4 bits as before, this makes the compressed image about half the size of the original. However, in a very colourful image, with only short runs of the same colour, run length encoding can produce undesirable results. In this example, run length encoding generates 311 items that need to be saved. That's nearly twice as many as the original 165. The compressed image file is therefore nearly twice the size of the original. Clearly, run length encoding is not suitable for all types of image data. We've seen this before. It's known as negative compression. Some implementations of run length encoding continue counting values in a run over more than one line. For example, this image can be encoded as 22 fives, followed by 4 11s, then 8 fives, and so on. In this case, the data can be stored in a simple one-dimensional stream. Needless to say, the decompression algorithm has to match the compression algorithm, and it will rely on some additional information about the width and the height of the image. Other variations might scan the image from top to bottom, column-wise. A compression algorithm might even scan an image row-wise, and then scan it column-wise, and save the output of whichever approach produces the best result. These days, run length encoding is rarely used on its own for image compression. But the technique does play a part in the algorithms of other image formats such as PNG, TIFF and TGA. Without going into detail here, part of the JPEG compression algorithm involves dividing an image into 8x8 eight eight blocks of pixels. These blocks are then mathematically converted into tables of brightness and colour information like the one shown here. These tables are then compressed with run length encoding. It's in the nature of these tables that longer runs can be achieved by scanning diagonally and in a zigzag fashion. To summarise, run length encoding is a lossless compression algorithm. It works best on data that have long runs of the same value. For example, a black and white image of a page in a book will encode well, due to the large amount of white. Run length encoding was used in old style fax machines for this reason. Line art images and architectural drawings that contain only a few colours with large white or black areas are also suitable. It's good for compressing certain other types of data as they're being collected, by data logging applications for example. Some medical scanners that generate huge amounts of three-dimensional imaging data also take advantage of the simplicity of run length encoding. Run length encoding is easy to implement. Even so, there are lots of ways this might be done. For example, in some implementations the output is a one-dimensional stream of count and value pairs. The example you've just seen scanned for sequences of common pixels, but some implementations look for sequences of bits. This would work well for black and white images, such as scanned images of text that contain long runs of white. Other implementations look for sequences of common bytes, or even groups of bytes. Another variation of run length encoding discards data during the encoding process, usually by ignoring one or two of the least significant bits in each pixel. For a complex image, this will have little effect on the overall quality, but it can greatly improve the compression ratio. Of course, this variation of run length encoding is lossy rather than lossless.
Run length encoding is a relatively simple process, so it's fast and it doesn't require a lot of CPU power. Run length encoding is also used in conjunction with other compression algorithms. For example, it forms a small but important part of the JPEG image compression process and a number of video compression techniques. Run length encoding can, however, result in negative compression. It doesn't suit all types of data.